You're looking at a live view of the Falcon 9 rocket and Dragon spacecraft that is in the final stages of preparation to launch the world's first all-private astronaut mission to the International Space Station in just over three hours from now. Today's launch marks the next step in the evolution of this human spaceflight story. This is the first of a number of private astronaut missions by Axiom Space to the International Space Station, and it represents the culmination of years of hard work between both government and private entities to open up the doors to low Earth orbit. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. Wherever you may be tuning in from around the world, welcome to the live broadcast of the launch of Axiom Mission 1, often called AX-1. My name is John Rackham, and I'm the Crew Systems Deputy Manager at Axiom Space, based out of Houston, Texas. My name is Kate Tice. I'm the Quality Systems Engineering Manager here at SpaceX headquarters in Hawthorne, California. Welcome. Together, we have quite a lot to share with you today about uh, today's historic AX-1 mission. As John mentioned, uh, this represents the first of its kind, as four Axiom astronauts will become the first all-private astronaut crew to the International Space Station. This is the first of four missions SpaceX will launch for Axiom Space. AX-1 also marks SpaceX's sixth human spaceflight mission overall and our fifth human spaceflight mission to the orbiting laboratory. Wow. Yeah, today's mission is the culmination of years of efforts by teams at Axiom Space to expand the opportunities of private citizens around the world to partake in, to partake in meaningful science, research, and STEAM-related activities in low-Earth orbit. We believe that the commercial efforts in low-Earth orbit should build on the foundation that NASA has laid while expanding the volume and type of research and manufacturing capabilities for the benefit of all. Missions just like today has opened the door for new countries around the world to pursue and participate in the benefits of human spaceflight. And for Axiom Space, each of our private astronaut missions are critical steps in the development of our Axiom Station, the world's first private space station currently under construction. Right now, Axiom astronauts Michael Lopez Alegria, Larry Connor, Eitan Stibba, and Mark Pathy are suiting up inside SpaceX's Falcon Support Building, or FSB, preparing to lift off from historic Launch Complex 39A at Kennedy Space Center in Florida. This crew will be spending eight days living and working on board the space station before returning to Earth and splashing down in the Atlantic Ocean. Right, and over the course of their 10-day journey, the AX-1 crew will conduct a wide range of experiments, including several that determine how people, just like you and I, respond to a microgravity environment. The data that they collect will be invaluable to furthering human exploration of space and hopefully inspire countless others to follow in their footsteps. The crew flying on today's mission includes members representing Spain, Canada, Israel, and the United States. Each has a story all their own through this mission. Uh, three new names will be added to the list of astronauts who have flown to orbit. Right, so let's take a look at our crew. The AX-1 mission is commanded by retired NASA astronaut Michael Lopez Alegria, a Spanish-American who was born in Madrid, Spain, and has also called Mission Viejo, California, as well as Boston, Massachusetts, home. Michael is a, U is a U.S. Navy captain and has flown three times aboard the space shuttle and once aboard Soyuz. He has conducted 10 spacewalks in his career, accumulating 67 hours and 40 minutes total in the vacuum of space, both of which are NASA records, and that's amazing. In 2021, he was inducted into the Astronaut Hall of Fame and known by many as MLA or Just LA. Uh, if you're a person who loves acronyms, here's a new one for you, as we will refer to commander of this mission as MLA over the course of our webcast. <laughs> yeah, super qualified for yeah. his role as commander. Also super qualified for his role, the pilot for AX-1 is Larry Connor from Dayton, Ohio. Larry is an entrepreneur, nonprofit activist investor. He has won aerobatic flying competitions and summited both Mount Kilimanjaro and Mount Rainier. Through AX-1, he will become the first private pilot to reach the ISS. He will also become the first human to reach both the deepest ocean depths and enter the bounds of outer space within one year. Larry has been actively involved with the Mayo... All right, so just some good notes there from our uh, countdown team. Um, as I was saying, Larry has been has been actively involved with the Mayo Clinic uh, and the Cleveland Clinic for many years, helping to understand the effects of aging. This mission will add a new dimension to several of these studies. And serving as Mission Specialist 1, Eitan Stiba will become the second Israeli ever to fly to space. 
In many ways, today's mission is a return to flight for the nation of Israel after the Columbia tragedy in 2003. Eitan served for more than four decades as a fighter pilot in the Israeli Air Force, where he received the Distinguished Aviator Medal, and today he is an impact investor and philanthropist. In collaboration with the Ramon Foundation, the Israel Space Agency, and the Ministry of Innovation, Science, and Technology, and the Ministry of Education, Stiba will fly to the ISS under the Rakia banner and the maxim, there is no dream beyond reach. During his time on the ISS, Stiba will facilitate scientific experiments, educational outreach, and even artistic activities. Mark Pathy is an entrepreneur, investor, and philanthropist, as well as mission specialist number two on this AX1 mission. Pathy is currently the chief executive officer and chairman of Montreal-based Maverick, a privately owned investment and financing company he founded that focuses on innovation and social impact. As a strong believer in the importance of philanthropy, Pathy is a member of uh, the boards and executive committees of the Montreal Children's Hospital Foundation, Dons LaRue, and the Pathy Family Foundation. Through the AX1 mission, Pathy will become Canada's second private astronaut and the 12th Canadian to go to space. So as the crew finishes suiting up inside the Falcon support building, we are moments away from seeing them walk out the same doors that the Inspiration4 crew inaugurated on their mission. But before they do, it's worth noting that today's mission holds a lot of excitement for groups around the world. So first up, cheering on mission specialist Mark Pathy are the many doctors and family of the Montreal Children's Hospital. And from Dayton, Ohio, the students of Dayton Early College Academy are following the journey of pilot Larry Connor. I love seeing those kids get excited. And then all the way across the Atlantic from our partners in Madrid, Spain, teams at Motor and Sport Institute are gathering together to celebrate the launch of Commander MLA's fifth flight to space. And continuing east, our good friends in Tel Aviv's Rakia Mission Control are actively engaged, monitoring the mission and cheering on Eitan Stiba. Kate, to me, this is what really sets this mission apart. Um, you know, this is what humanizes this mission, seeing everybody that this crew's got to interact with and everything this means to these people here on Earth. Uh, it really shows that, you know, this is how the dots are connected between what's going on up there and what's going on down here. Hearing about the kinds of research and outreach that each member has chosen to focus on uh, was particularly interesting to me. Uh, they don't have a lot of time up there no. <laughs> at all. <laughs> um, so uh, to focus on aspects like art uh, really gives, uh, on, on such a large scale, is really yeah. interesting. Yeah. Well, as you can imagine, it's been a pretty busy morning already for the Axiom 1 crew. Uh, they had a wake-up call at about T-8 minus hours and 40 minutes to launch, followed by their first medical checks of the day, and then a shared meal with their families. At around T-4 minus hours and 21 minutes, crew was formally handed off to SpaceX at the shuttle landing facility parking lot. At T minus three hours and 50 minutes, uh, the crew arrived at the suit up room located in the Falcon support building, uh, which is just a, uh, basically right behind this camera view that you see there. Uh, also around then they had their pre-launch briefing, including uh, weather information, launch details, and uh, ga we gave them their tablets uh, that they get to bring with them mm -hmm. onto flight, uh, which brings us to the current efforts. Um, at T minus three hours and 25 minutes, we will, uh, the, the crew began suiting up. Uh, and once that process is complete, they will exit the Falcon support building and get into their Teslas. We will have two astronauts in each of the Teslas, uh, led by a support vehicle. It's a short drive up to the launch pad. And once they arrive, the crew will ascend the fixed service structure that you see there in an elevator up to the 255 foot level. The crew will then take the stairs up the last 10 feet where they will stop and make one final phone call before walking down the crew access arm to the white room. 
The White Room is their last stop before climbing into the spacecraft, a process known as crew ingress. During ingress, the SpaceX team will run a series of checks to ensure the suits, seats, and vehicle interactions are all functioning properly. Right, and after all the vehicle and crew checkouts are completed, the SpaceX closeout team will then close Dragon's side hatch and depart the pad. At about T minus 40 minutes from launch, the crew access arm will then retract away, followed by the arming of the launch escape system. And once that arm is retracted and the escape system is armed, propellant loading on Falcon 9 will begin. At T minus five minutes from launch, Dragon will be configured for we, what we call terminal count. And this is when Dragon's onboard computers take control of the spacecraft. And finally, at T zero, Dragon and Falcon 9 will lift off from pad 39A. Roughly 12 minutes after liftoff, Dragon will separate from Falcon 9's second stage and spend the next 24 hours making its way to the International Space Station. Good morning, I'm John Insbrucker, Falcon 9 Principal Integration Engineer here at SpaceX. We're currently at T-minus 3 hours, 12 minutes, and everything looks good for an on-time launch later today. Now, as Kate mentioned, the crew received their weather briefing just after T-minus 4 hours. As you can see from the view here, blue skies around Kennedy Space Center, pad 39A. Probability of weather violations is down to just 10%. Mostly we're just looking at some wind. We've also checked the ascent corridor in case of a launch escape is needed by Dragon. The sea state conditions are acceptable there. And even in the emergency deorbit locations, everything is acceptable. So the weather's looking good. Now at pad 39A, the Falcon 9 is powered up. The engine checkouts were performed overnight and pressurization of the gas storage tanks on the vehicle is completed about T minus six hours. Now, T minus two hours, Falcon will begin its final checks for launch, including a communication check with the crew, and propellant loading will begin at T minus 35 minutes. Now, as with all of our launches to the International Space Station, we have an instantaneous launch window at 11.17 a.m. Eastern, or 15 hours, 17 minutes universal time. If for whatever reason we weren't able to launch today, our next opportunity will be just under 24 hours later on the 9th of April. Thanks, John. So we are just under three hours and almost 10 minutes before a crew is expected uh, until launch and we're expecting the crew to walk out uh, in just a few minutes from the Falcon support building. Uh, John, as we wait for that, let's talk about any tr new traditions or celebrations uh, yeah. for Axiom leading up to launch. Yeah, yeah, of course, Kate. Um, so as you know, uh, and as you can imagine, this has been a pretty big milestone that many at Axiom Space have been working towards for years. Uh, so we wanted to find a moment to highlight all that effort and mark a new phase of this journey that we're on together. So about two weeks ago, the Axiom family gathered together along with a crew and created a new tradition. And to mark the end of preparation of training phases and signify the first steps towards the operations phases, we held a first step to space ceremony at Axiom headquarters in Houston. Here's a quick highlight of that moment. We're really excited to welcome you for the first ever crew send off. Oh. Are you all excited to be here? We really are excited. I am thrilled. Today is a moment of celebration. You come work each day because you're doing something that makes a difference in the history of humanity. That's what you're all about. You're making a giant impact to human spaceflight. This company is about to change the way the world thinks of human spaceflight. And you guys cannot imagine the impact that all of you are having really on history. It's ultimately the people at the front lines who make the difference. Do not underestimate your impact or your value. Thank you really for the warm welcome coming from the other side of the world. I think this is a positive uh, uh, vibe and uh, hopefully that everyone will enjoy this effort. It was really amazing how everybody stepped up. It's really about changing the world and about uh, making uh, the world a better place. It's the beginning. We're about to have our missions. We're going to have our space station and this is the beginning. And if that doesn't give you a little bit of chills, then you're probably in the wrong job. <laughs> Go X1! Yeah.
So around that same time, we scanned the bottom of the right shoe of each of the crew's flight suit and created what we're calling the stepping to space tradition. Uh, the crew will sign this finished plaque once they return from their mission. So you can see there, that's the plaque with their shoes imprinted and it's been milled out. It's got the mission patch on it. The crew's gonna sign that when they come back. That's super cool. Yeah. Obviously, so we're in Hawthorne, California, kind of close to Hollywood. Mm -hmm. uh, seeing that kind of reminds me of the area in front of the Chinese theater oh, yeah. where uh, movie stars get to put their handprints and footprints in. Um, I, I like that one better. Yeah. That one's that one's pretty cool. It's, it's pretty a cool. space one. <laughs> it's exactly. It's a pretty unique space one. A little cleaner maybe too. That's super cool. So we're hearing that we're just a couple minutes away from uh, being able to see the crew for the first time today. They are currently suiting up inside the Falcon Support Building or FSB. Mm -hmm. um, that's the basically the, the hangar close by uh, to the launch pad and the team ha is in there uh, with the closeout team, excuse me, not the closeout team, the, the suit. Core, countdown, we're at T minus three hours, seven minutes. Crew suit donning is complete. All right. We so are ahead of schedule. Even better news yeah. ahead of schedule. Um, now uh, you might hear check-ins uh, with the team indicating what kind of margin that we have with mm -hmm. our, with our, uh, our, our countdown basically uh, and proceeding up to launch. We do build in margin so that if um, we are running a little bit behind or a little bit ahead, it's all good, basically. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and you know, a lot of those uh, those calls that you hear, you know, those are clear steps in a procedure as um, as you can imagine, this day is very heavily synchronized. Everybody's got a job to do um, and it, we follow procedures. So, you know, hearing those call outs really means we're on the right track, people are paying attention to the right things and we're on a good successful path. Yeah, ultimately the countdown is the thing that aligns all the teams that are working together for liftoff and, right. um, you know, there's there's folks that are in mission control, but then there's lots of people behind the scenes as well. Exactly. Uh, and that countdown is what aligns everybody to the right step in the process. Right. Uh, so yeah, we're, we just heard there that the crew has completed uh, the suit up process. And so we are hoping to get our first look at, at them today uh, as they exit the Falcon support building. All right. And we're hearing that they are close to exiting the building. Right. Not quite there yet. For those of you that have joined us recently, uh, we are uh, w awaiting the crew to exit the Falcon support building. Right, and you can see there on either side of where crew's gonna be walking out, uh, the Axiom logo patch, um, or the mission patch rather. Um, and when crew comes out, they'll be greeted by a, uh, I think it's called the advanced team crew, or the advanced team, Kate, is that correct? Uh, so the advanced team is the group of people that are actually already out at the pad oh, right. uh, inside the tower and the capsule preparing uh, those areas for the crew's arrival. Um, that we are expecting to see the crew exit any moment. Uh, they will get into a couple of Teslas that will take them up to the pad. Um, in addition to the crew, we will also have the flight surgeon and closeout leads um, riding along in the Teslas along with our astronauts. And you mentioned, Kate, you know, riding the Teslas to the launch pad. Um, you know, it's a, it, it's a bit of a decent walk, I think, uh, if they had to walk <laughs> to the pad. But, um, oh, we're and, on, count down. We're and at there they are. We're getting minutes. our first we'll look at the Axiom 1 crew as they exit the suit-up room. We can see there Michael Lopez Alegria, Larry Connor, Aton Stibba, and Mark Pathy. This is our first live look at the Axiom 1 crew suited up for their mission to the International Space Station. You can see them there getting a few photos together. They look ready. That's what do you perfect. think they're saying? Three, two, one. That's perfect. What? I, think, I think they're saying, you know, guys, we have worked so hard to get to this point, and let's go do this. Yeah. That's great. So now they're going to hop into those Teslas. It's about a 2,000 foot uh, drive or walk if you wanted to, yeah. but, um, you know, we want to keep everybody cool and comfortable before hopping into their spaceship. So um, we are going to drive them up to the pad from Falcon Support Building. And as you saw on your left side of the screen, um, uh, 
Michael Lopez Alegria, the commander, and Larry Connor, the pilot, are riding in one Tesla together, and in the other is Eitan Stibba and Mark Pathy. So again, you can see there on the left side, from left to right, we have Larry Connor and MLA in one Tesla together. And on the right side of the screen, you can see Eitan Stibba and Mark Pathy. So they're getting buckled in, the doors came down and closed, and they are ready to get to the pad. Right now, the team inside the Tesla is just doing final checks with the crew, make sure everybody is good to go um, and depart for the tower. And for their own comfort, Kate, you know, they have they have umbilicals in the Tesla that connect to them, so it keeps them cool and keeps powered on. Um, yeah, we actually have um, vessels inside the Teslas themselves that pump out nitrox or nitrogen oxygen air. Uh, we know it's the same stuff that scuba divers use in their right. tanks when they're underwater. Right. Uh, and that is pumped through the umbilical um, into the suits to help make sure that the crew members, uh, like you said, remain cool and comfortable during their ride. Um, it's, it's the same thing. It's basically the same hookup that we uh, plug them into whenever they're actually inside the capsule itself. Right. Well, as the Axiom 1 crew ride out to their rocket, we thought it fitting to hear a few of those from across the Axiom family wishing them well. Space exploration has always been about inspiring others, and this AX1 mission is bringing about a new type of inspiration for the world. Congratulations, guys. I'm very excited to work with you to complete your science experiments and your educational outreach when you get on board ISS. Godspeed and go AX1 crew. We know you guys are prepared and we'll be supporting you here from Mission Control in Houston. Launch day is finally here. Your cargo is packed and ready and we can't wait to see you on orbit. Go AX1. I just wanted to wish you all luck and reiterate how inspiring this mission is for me and many people here on Earth. The prop team at Axiom Space would like to wish the AX1 crew safe travels to and from the ISS. Fly safe and we'll see you on orbit. Uh, I just want to wish you guys a safe, smooth ride up there. And on behalf of the uh, Axiom Operations leads, uh, we're looking forward to supporting you guys when you get on board. Hope you have a good stay. We are so excited about our first launch, and congratulations to the crew of AX1 on making history. Thanks from the payloads team. Uh, we're really proud of the science that you guys will be doing on this mission and look forward to hearing all about it once you get back here on Earth. Thank you guys so much for letting us pioneer and improve upon the commercialization of space. We wish you the best of luck on your journey. We are absolutely thrilled to have worked with you in building AX1. We're so grateful that you are doing this first for us and we cannot wait for you to come home safely. We are so pleased to be involved with this historic moment that y'all are about to journey and we are wishing you safe travels, infinity and beyond. As you're taking the next step in the evolution of the space industry, I want you guys to be proud of that, embrace it, and Godspeed. The Wright brothers once said that the desire to fly has been handed down from our ancestors, looking up enviously at the birds soaring through space. And I just wanna say it's now your time to be the envy of the birds as you soar higher and further than most of us could ever dare. Good luck and Godspeed, AX1. So awesome to see yeah. well wishes from the Axiom teams. Core on countdown one. We're at T minus two hours, 59 minutes. Crew have arrived at the pad. We are ahead of schedule. All right. That was um, a commentary from SpaceX core or crew operations and resources engineer Arthur Berrial indicating that the crew has arrived, which as you can see uh, just there momentarily ago, uh, exiting the Teslas. This is their first opportunity to get an up-close look at their ride to space today. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's worth noting that we did perform a dry dress rehearsal on Wednesday. Mm -hmm. Was that? Yeah, I guess yeah, Wednesday. Wednesday. Um, and so we, you know, just like we're doing today, we walked through all the steps. Um, and uh, they, so they got, they've seen the rocket up close before, but not on launch day. And not, and not quite like this. I think it's a completely different feeling, uh, you know, when you're walking out of that FSB. Uh, for the first time on launch day, right? You, you do the 
it, you do the rehearsal, um, but today is completely different, right? <laughs> you can see them there enjoying it. They they are ready to go. That looks like Aton there <laughs> giving a good dance. Uh, I mean, you can just feel his excitement yeah. through the the camera lens. Exactly. Well, it, and I, th- I think it really I think it really highlights the fact that you know this really is a return to flight uh, for Israel, and and the amount of work that each of these crew members have done to prepare for this mission has been outstanding. You know, we they. We, we, we mentioned earlier the training and choreography that leads up to a launch, and uh, this crew has really gone above and beyond in their training to prep for this mission. You know, 700 to 1,000 hours of training. Um, they really set that bar high for what this mission means to them and how they want to give back to the mission. And so I think it's more than fitting here to have a little bit of time to look back <laughs> and enjoy it and say, we are ready. You know, we are ready to get up there, and we are ready to go to the ISS, and we are ready to participate. So with that view there, you can actually see the elevator doors that they're about to hop into. They'll get in those elevators, which I should note, um, you know, we are launching from pad 39A. Uh, this is the this is the pad that humanity went to the moon from. Apollo 11 launched from here. Um, and, you know, the space shuttle then flew out of this pad after, after, the, after the Saturn V program ended. And we just saw MLA and Mark... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Yeah, yeah. Um, and so when SpaceX took over the lease for this launch pad in 2014, uh, we did make some safety improvements and general refurbishments to the tower. So we did remove the rotating service structure. But what we see here, this is still the fixed service structure that existed uh, in the shuttle program. So these elevators that this crew is getting into, um, you know, MLA got in these elevators yeah. when he flew shuttle. Right. Uh, so that's pretty cool. Now they're going to take these elevators up to the 255 foot level. Uh, in the tower, we don't mark it by level numbers. Uh, and there we can see that they have exited the elevator. Right. We see Mark Pathy there um, uh, walking up um, uh, the rest of the service structure. Uh, While well, it looked like MLA had taken a little bit of a little bit of a glance uh, out of the tower, they're looking back down. <laughs> he's just allowed. Kind of, yeah, he's allowed. <laughs> he's got a bit of pedigree there. Um, but just taking a look at where he's at, you know. And and here we're going to see uh, Larry Connor and Aton Stibba riding up in the other elevator. Yeah, so they're going to go up to the 255-foot level, um, and then right there we can see them ascending the final 10 feet up to the 265-foot level via a staircase. Now here they have an opportunity to use the telephone um, that is placed there. Same deal uh, as with previous space flight missions um, of history. You get you get one last chance to mm-hmm. uh, to call anyone. It's been noted that um, you know obviously we're broadcasting this live. <laughs> we're saying there's a telephone, um, but you know back in the old days, astronauts used to love to not tell people yeah. that they were gonna they could get you know a phone call before right. they got into their launch vehicle. Um, so. And then we see Aton and Larry emerging from the elevator and making their way over to the telephone as well. And Kate, it look, I, I'm, I'm seeing I'm seeing that uh, that advanced team, you know, following them around. Everybody's got numbers marked down. It looks like everybody here has a very specific role to play in the um, you know the pad walk up and um, uh, all, all the way through crew ingress, right? For sure, uh, everyone is in bunny suits. This we want to make sure that the spacecraft itself is a clean environment. You know, we are launching from Florida. Mm-hmm. There's bugs. <laughs> There's no way to avoid them. Um, you know, from an atmospheric standpoint. So we. We really want to make sure that we block off any opportunity for FOD, for an object debris, which could be a bug, could be a hair, right. you know, could be anything that's not meant to be in the vehicle. Um, and so we, we, you can actually see it in the right-hand corner. There's a small window, a rectangle, and that's basically a protective flap that blocks the uh, open environment mm. air um, from the crew access arm uh, and therefore into the white room and into the capsule. Uh, so really making sure that that environment is clean. That's why these um, our closeout leads and our suit technicians are in those uh, bunny suits that you see there with numbers on the back. It's hard to tell people apart, so you yeah. gotta, you're assigned a number. Um, and yeah, so we try to do our best here to make sure that everything that we don't want uh, to go into, ultimately to go up to the space station, you know, uh, there's, it stays out. Right. And again, you know, that's just one small part of the controls that are in place to really make sure that, you know, launch day is successful. Um, and another part of that is understanding the role that everybody plays. It's all part of the training that leads to this moment. Um, you know, as I'm as I'm sitting there watching it as well, I'm noticing the arrows marked on the ground, you know, representing emergency egress paths and things mm-hmm. like that. So. 
Saw yeah. a great moment there between uh, uh, between Larry and Aton. <laughs> uh, you can tell they're just excited about it. Yeah, as you mentioned before, a lot of training has gone into what we're seeing today. Um, that includes preparation for all scenarios. Those arrows on the floor basically indicate the quickest path to safety mm -hmm. in the event that um, the teams need to exit the tower rapidly. Um, so everything is, uh, we, we try to think of everything, uh, mm -hmm. all scenarios. Right. Uh, preparation is ultimately the, 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 the key to success. So there you see a view of that 265 foot level connected uh, by the crew access arm over to the capsule. Uh, now we do see folks milling about. Um, one thing to note, we, we did have uh, uh, part of uh, the SpaceX crew actually here at the pad prior to the arrival of the crew. They're called the advanced team. Um, that's a small group of people that are basically responsible for preparing the cabin prior to the crew's arrival. Um, you know, they, they show up, they open the, the side hatch, they make sure that the cabin lights are on, they make sure that the task lights um, above each seat are functional and working, um, making sure that this, the, the displays are configured for crew ingress, um, initial comm checks, and, you know, you mentioned before, We've practiced everything. Mm -hmm. Everything is, is um, you know, it's a choreograph. Yeah. Uh, that advanced team, it's so well choreographed. That advanced team in their procedures even have written, make sure there's a Sharpie. Really? Yeah. So wow. we're going to see the crew have the opportunity to add their signature to the white room. And it's actually in our procedures. Make sure that there's a Sharpie for the crew to sign the wall. I love that. Looks like one of our crew members is making that call. We think it's its hard to tell. You know, I saw earlier Aton leaning over the balcony, I think just taking everything in. What a beautiful day. Looks like that might be Larry Connor on the phone. And then we see Mark and MLA there as well, talking to their crew team or to their to their suit teams as well, um, and that advanced team that Kate was talking about. And yeah, so you might notice the the closeout lead there in the uh, black bunny suit on the right hand side has a tablet. Mm. Uh, that tablet is basically what we use to go by step by step those those electronic procedures that we have written. Um, and as you see people stop and pause and you might see the crew members give a thumbs up, that's all part of the procedure. Right, and we get our first look here now as crew is walking towards the white room, getting ready for ingress into their Dragon capsule. We see MLA and Mark <laughs> uh, right there walking towards their capsule right now. They'll be uh, ingressing first. And soon we should be able to get a good shot here as crew waits ingress. As Mark and MLA Cold make their way. Countdown. We're at T minus two hours, 50 minutes. Crew have arrived at the white room to prepare for ingress. Now that MLA and Mark have 